Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 77 of my podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are a new viewer, welcome! And if you are a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Today is a really nice, sunny, pleasant, breezy Thursday in June here on the Northern California coast where I am coming to you from. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast that you can find <clears throat> in Ravelry. There's a link down in the description box below. That's where you'll find show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. It's where you'll find knit-along stuff. We have one knit-along happening right now and it is ending soon. It is the spring sweater cow hashtag on Instagram is spring sweater K-A-L and that officially ends on June 21st, I guess? June 21st, the last day of spring, I think that's what the last day of spring is. That's when it officially ends, but I will leave the threads open until I record next. So that's pretty much an extra two weeks, one and a half weeks or something like that. So if you're participating in the spring sweater make-along, keep participating. You have an extra little while to do so. I will be drawing prizes at my next episode from the Ravelry group FO thread and from the hashtag on Instagram. So I hope you are having fun making all of the garments this spring. I have been like a whole lot. And that is it for admin this week, short and sweet. I will now move on to showing you my one and only FO for this episode. I have worked my butt off these past two weeks to finish this spiral blanket of awesome. It's done. <laughs> it took a long time, um, but I got it done. So here it is. The Spiral Blanket of Awesome is a pattern by Sharon McMahone. I will link to it in the show notes. It's um, a free pattern on Ravelry, and it's it's not a download. It's like a link to a PDF file that's published on a website. So you can get to it through Ravelry, though, and I will link to it. So I am so happy this thing is finished. I spent most of my time knitting on this. I'm really happy I got it done. It is uh, for a friend of mine who is due to have her third baby this month. I haven't talked to her in a long time. I don't think she's had the baby yet. I, I should text her today and get her address so I can send this to her. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know. She watches sometimes, I think. Hi, Sarah, if you're watching. Have you had your baby yet? How'd it go? I don't know. You're going to get this blanket soon. Anyway, I knit this with a few different yarns. Uh, the brown is Dreaming Color Everlasting, which is a DK weight yarn. Uh, it's like 12 plies. It's crazy. And uh, the colorway was like a club colorway. So it didn't actually have a club colorway name. It was just called September 2015, I think, maybe. Could have been it. And then, so that was one whole skein is the middle here. And then this brown and teal speckle is a one-of-a-kind Moonstone Dye Works skein in the Merino DK base. And then it is edged with um, three different bits of leftovers from my leftover leftover bin. They're all DK weight. They're all hand-dyed yarn. I don't know. I have vague ideas of what they are, but I'm not sure if what I think they are is correct. Um, so the first one is this kind of light, lighter teal. I don't know what that is. And then we've got this deeper teal, a hand-dyed yarn company called Yarn Indulgences maybe. And then I ran out of that during the bind off and had to move on to this gray here. And that one I'm pretty sure is Two Guys Yarn Company. And uh, this border, this edging takes a lot of yarn. Just the border itself can take, I think like almost an entire skein of yarn. So I did it with two full skeins and then I just kept grabbing <laughs> little bits of leftovers until I was done. And uh, that was really nice because I got a lot of yarn and leftover yarn out of my stash. 
So I was pretty happy about that. I really love this pattern as a baby blanket. It's one of my favorite baby knits. And the way it works is you start from the center. There are instructions in the free pattern for casting on in the round so that you can increase out. And I did, I followed the instructions for her cast on the very first time I made this pattern. But ever since then, uh, I have instead done a magic circle cast on. I don't know what it's called, but it's this cast on where you take a crochet hook and you crochet around, you crochet into a loop that you've made. And then you eventually pull it tight, put all those stitches on the knitting needle and go from there. I will link to a tutorial probably, probably in the show notes. <laughs> I think it's called a magic something cast on. Magic circle. I think it's a magic circle. Is it a magic circle? But that's usually what I do when I knit this blanket. And I like how it looks pretty well. And then you just increase out. And your increases, you do them at regular intervals every other round at the same spot. They end up looking like a big spiral. And I think it is really cool. And I like it. The border, as I said, is ruffly. And you do that by purling and knitting alternately and then increasing your knit stitches while keeping your purl stitches the same count. So it creates this little like, they're almost like pleats, the way the ruffles made. So I'm super happy this is done. I knit a lot on this. This thing came a little close to killing my mojo. I was really happy to be done with it. Especially the ruffle. The ruffle just takes a long time. The bind off took a long time. I was pretty happy to be done with it. And now it's done and I love it. Um, this is also a really cool pattern because you can do it in any weight of yarn, at any gauge that you want. There's no real stitch counts. You just go until you feel like you're done. You can make it as big or as small as you want. And the last one that I made, the one that I made for myself, I used three skeins of DK weight yarn. This one is two, probably two and a half. So very cool. I used a size six needle. I could be wrong. I don't remember. I'm probably lying. I don't know. I didn't make a properly project page for it either. So what are you gonna do? Moving on. That was my FO. Moving on to whips. I have been almost exclusively working on two projects since the last episode. I have one pair of socks that I worked a little bit on, but other than that, I've got the blanket and then I've got one more thing coming up and that is it. I have been, what do you call monogamous when you're working on two things? I don't know. I worked on this pair of socks though. This is a pair of socks that I am knitting using Fully Spun Yarn, and Fully Spun is an independent yarn company that dyes their wool in the wool. They dye it as in roving or whatever she uses. And then it is spun at a mill. So you get this really cool barber pulley gradienty sort of effect that emulates hand spun that is similar in style to spin cycle yarns it is a good alternative to that if you are looking for one and this is i found the tag i don't know if you remember last week i blamed my daughter for losing the tag my husband found it the next day in the backyard on the lawn this is the original fingering base <laughs> in the colorway brunch, and it's a 7525 superwash merino and nylon yarn. And this is what I've got so far. So I'm doing a plain stockinette sock. It was top down. I cast on 64 stitches with a German twisted cast on. I did a two by two rib for however long I felt like, which was this long. And I do to do to do to all the way down the leg and then I did a heel flap and gusset. Oh, 
And now I am back down to the foot, back to my original 64 stitch count because I am done with the gusset decreases. And that's it. That's more than what I did last time when I showed you, right? I worked on this, didn't I? I think so. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, this is bigger than it was when I showed you last time. I think so. <laughs> ah, okay. So I am knitting these on a size US zero using my Chiaogu interchangeable twist minis, which are my favorite sock needles because they're great and I love them. And I love how it's working out. It is gold and a purple, which as you uh, may see soon is a theme of mine right now for some reason. I don't know, don't know why, but uh, I really like them. What I am really excited for is this pink that is gonna be happening at some point, probably in the second sock. I'm pulling from the outside of the cake, so as you can see, I have more gold, and then it's gonna go back into purple and white, and then there's a purple section, and then another gold section, and then a pink section. I really wanna to get to the pink section, so I think what I'm gonna do for the second pair of socks is I think I'm gonna start from the middle so that I can start with the pink. Actually, if you look at this end, the pink is way out here, so I don't even know. I don't know where that pink is. The pink is somewhere in here and I'm gonna get to it in my second sock, even if it means I have to pull out a bunch of yarn and just cheat and get to the pink that way. Cause I really wanna get to the pink. So I have a feeling this one's gonna be pretty much all golds and purples and the second one's gonna be more golds and pinks with some purple scattered in there. Anyway, I really like it. I really love working with this yarn. It's a two-ply and it's kind of a lighter fingering, which I like. It's fun. It's fun to work on. And that is it for those socks. They are vanilla socks, so they're as interesting as the yarn is, which is really interesting, but beyond that, it's just a vanilla, vanilla, vanilla on to my other whip. This is my only other whip. This is what I have been focusing the most on the past couple weeks because I am obsessed. I broke down and I'm knitting a Soldatna crop. I don't know. I had no interest in this pattern, like at all. <laughs> and then I think I just slowly, I don't know what I, it either slowly happened or it happened all of a sudden. I don't really know. But I one day decided I needed to cast it on, so I did. And now I'm knitting a Soldatna crop in these yarns. Gold and purple much? I seriously don't know where this gold and purple thing is coming from. Here it is. This is a, a Soldatna crop, which is a pattern by the insanely lovely and talented Caitlin Hunter. It's an all over color work pattern, like all over from top to bottom, everything. It's a top down yoked short sleeve cropped DK weight sweater, which I think the reason, one of the reasons why I wasn't interested in it initially are those three things combined. Short sleeve cropped DK weight sweater. On paper, that doesn't appeal to me at all. It just doesn't. Short sleeve sweaters, I'm a little iffy on. I mean, yeah, I've been, I've knit and I am knitting other short sleeve tops, but they're lighter weight, they might be linen, they're more like constructed to be like a tee style, but like a sweater, like with DK weight yarn. I don't have any good reasons for not being attracted to it, but I just wasn't. Um, also, I've never been a fan of cropped tops. <laughs> Not a crop top kind of gal, but all of the sudden, recently, I am. I like really am into the idea of crop tops, probably just because they're blowing up kind of big right now. And I'm seeing the way other people are styling them, which is not a way that I've ever thought to style them. And I like it. I mean, I think before I would think of crop top and think of like 
you know, belly flashing. <laughs> like jeans with a crop top and then your midriff is like showing you know I mean like mid 90s junior high style and I am not comfortable with that but then I was seeing people wearing crop tops over skater dresses over flowy linen tunics and I really really like that style so now I kind of want to make all the crop tops so I don't know this just this top kind of tackled me and I had to cast it on but you know what now that I'm thinking about it now that I'm actually talking about it I know I remember now why I was like okay let's do it it's because Kristen from Vine is knitting one of these as well and she's turning hers into a long sleeve version and I really like that idea and it would be really easy to do with this top so I was envisioning still a crop top but with long or like, I don't know, three quarter sleeves, maybe something like that. And because she was like, well, yeah, why wouldn't I just do a long sleeve version if I wanted to have sleeves? It's not that hard. I was like, oh, that's going to be awesome. And I think that's why I cast it on. So thank you, Kristen. Good idea. Here it is. <laughs> I am really, really enjoying it. The yarn that I'm using is Moonstone Dye Works which is my hand-dyed yarn company. I dyed this yarn myself. And I am using this cake of yarn with a needle tip stabbed into it. This is my Superwash 100% Merino. Superwash, 100% Superwash Merino DK weight base, which is called Merino DK if it will focus maybe there we go this is my wild honey colorway which i really really love it's gold and this colorway is actually named after my friend sarah who i knit the baby blanket for she also knit that painting which is a painting of me holding a trafalgar bag you can't tell because all you can see is my legs but I'm wearing a green dress. She painted that. She's a very talented artist. Me and her used to do a lot of collaborations together back when we lived in the same town. We made a manga together. We made a coloring book together. We, what else did we do? We did, we did, you used to do a lot of like artsy fartsy things together. We had a music project together. Mm -hmm. We were a duo. I played guitar and she played the keyboard and we sang mostly Carter family songs. Anyway, this is Wild Honey, named for her. And the next color, color B or how to, however she does it, is this one. This is Stardust, which is a tonal pink. The next color is Venus, which is my purple accent in this uh, purple gold combo. This one is the last color and it is Magical Creatures, which is a uh, speckled, mostly whitish, grayish kind of yarn. This is one of my favorite colorways. So, Wild Honey, Stardust, Venus and magical creatures. You know what this makes? I thought of this the other day when I put a post up on Instagram and I like it, but it's gross. Sticky space unicorns. Sticky because of the honey. Don't get dirty. So this is my <laughs> sticky space unicorn soldat on the top. Anyway, uh, I really love how it's turning out. And I've been having such a good time working on this thing. Here's the body. Oh, I just love it so much. So, I like color work. I like it fine. I usually get a little sick of it. It usually makes my hands hurt a little bit if I do it too much. Um, 
I usually really appreciate that some color work patterns are like color work for a part of it and then just plain stockinette for the other part of it for like the majority of it. This is all over color work so the whole body even is just dots of color work and I'm having such a good time the entire way through. It's holding my interest. It's like really engaging the entire way through from top to bottom. I am just loving this. And you know what I think uh, is one of the things that I really like about it, which is so common right now. Like a lot of people are doing this. This is part of why so many, it's not part of why so many patterns are popular like this, but so many patterns like this are popular right now. And I see the appeal. Um, so, you know, a lot of traditional color work is done with non-superwash yarns, wools that are sticky. They lend themselves really great to color work. Superwash Merino historically hasn't been what has been recommended for color work, but it's really gaining popularity right now to do that. And with this project, I'm falling in love with it. It is so fun. Why am I such a dork? I don't know why I'm talking like this. It is so fun to do color work with, for me particularly right now, hand-dyed DK weight yarn. Hand-dyed DK weight superwash merino yarn. It's so fun. I mean, I really, really like this superwash DK weight 100% merino yarn. It's really nice, it's really soft and squishy and like plump, and that feels really good when I'm knitting this in color work. It just feels really good to be doing it. And just seeing the way the colors are playing together, it's just so engaging and I love it. Don't get me wrong, I do love my non-superwash yarns like a whole lot, but uh, I don't know, this is, it's not new new for me using non super using super wash hand dyed yarns in color work, but this particular experience with it is really like rejuvenating me right now. I just love it. And I'm almost done. So it is a crop, so this looks like it's just the yoke, right? It's almost done. <laughs> so I've knit this much from the armhole to the bottom, and in the pattern, she tells you you can do like one repeat of these little dots is like like that kind of. It's like an inch is one repeat. She tells you here's the repeat, do it however many times you want to make it the length you want. But she says that in the sample photo, in the sample garment in the pattern photo, she does the repeat five times. So I'm looking at that, I like the way it looks on her. I like how cropped it is. I really want this thing to be proper cropped. I wanna, that's what I want for it. But I have a really short torso. I'm a very short person and uh, I am sure I have a much shorter tor torso than Caitlin Hunter does. So I'm looking at it on her and yeah, I could be looking at schematics too and measuring stuff, but meh. I'm looking at it on her and I like where it hits and I'm thinking to myself, I'm probably, this is what I'm thinking of myself right now. I'm probably gonna do a half a repeat less than her. That's my current plan. So right now I've done four repeats. She did five, I think I'm gonna do four and a half, which means I only have another half a repeat to go before I start the bottom. I have tried it on, I took the needles out, I put it on waist yarn, I tried it on. It's very short, right now it comes up to like right here, <laughs> which is really short. Um, but I still have to do the ribbing and since it is superwash merino yarn, I do believe it is going to grow in length once I block it. I should also say I did not swatch, which is really rare for me. I, I feel like my swatching habits have been kind of dying lately. I am so into swatching. I am such an advocate for swatching. But I am also a realist when it comes to swatching, and I know that in the words of Laura Linneman from The Knit Girls, swatches lie. They kind of do. They just do. Because they're not the same as a whole garment. They're just not. And so I'm a firm believer in swatching, but I'm also a realist, and I know that you have to take swatching with a grain of salt and think of the bigger picture. This is all to say that 
I have just been super lazy about swatching lately and I just haven't been doing it. For the past couple sweaters I've done, I've swatched really slapdashedly. And for this one, I just didn't swatch at all. I just didn't. I used the recommended needle size and I just rolled with it. And I think it's going good. I tried it on. I figured I would do the thing that um, Ellie of Skin Deer likes to talk about, is that you start a project, you get a little ways in, you see how it's going, that counts as your swatch, right? And if it, if it isn't working, then you can rip it out and start it over with a different needle. That's kind of the approach I took to this. And I, I didn't actually, well, case. Okay, I'm all over the place. I did actually check my gauge when I was like, maybe right here or something. But to me, that's not the same because I haven't blocked it. And your proper gauge happens after you block the thing. I always take gauge, I always measure my gauge before blocking and after blocking, compare the two, blah, blah, blah. So I did take gauge, but that doesn't really mean anything because this is gonna change. The gauge is gonna change after it blocks. But anyway, I've been trying it on. And with the knowledge that I know it's gonna grow, I think it's gonna be fine. I am, by the way, making the second to smallest size, which is a size small. And it's meant to have, I think anywhere between two and four and a half inches of positive ease. And the size small, I can't remember. I think it's maybe 36 inches and I'm a 32 was my actual bust size. So it's gonna be fine. <laughs> oh. What am I talking about, you guys? I don't even know. Anyway, here it is, it's beautiful. I really, really like this project. I'm, it's so much fun. I really, I mean, if you've thought about knitting this, I think you should just do it. I really think you should because it's really fun. It's really fun. So, okay. So I'm gonna do my next half a repeat of the body chart. And then I'm gonna do the bottom ribbing after I block it, if I don't like the length, then I'll just adjust the ribbing. I can always rip out the bind off and take out some of the ribbing or make the ribbing longer. I doubt it's gonna be too short, but if it's not long enough, I can add more ribbing. It'll be fine. As for the sleeves, as I mentioned, because I just remembered it, the thing that actually made me cast this thing on was the idea that I could make longer sleeves because this is a short sleeved. Thing. I don't know now. I don't know if I'm going to do long sleeves or not. I haven't decided. If I do long sleeves, I'm going to do what Kristen did, and I'm just going to do this body pattern on the sleeves for as long as I feel like it. And I'll probably do some decreases along the way. But I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it short sleeved. Maybe I need to expand my rep, but no. My. I don't know. Maybe I need to. Maybe I need to start wearing short sleeve sweaters. So this one time when I was like 20, I worked at Kinko's and I had this man, he was the store manager. His, I probably shouldn't tell you his name, but he wasn't a good guy. He just wasn't. And there were a lot of things to um, dislike about this guy. One of them was just his demeanor, his style. He was just kind of icky. And one day on the weekend, we had a staff meeting at the office. And so he came in to the staff meeting and it was his day off. So he was dressed in his normal clothes, not his like suit and tie, you know? And he was wearing a short sleeve sweater. It was, it was one of those sweaters, it, like a sweatshirt, you know, it's just like, it's cotton, it's sweatshirt material, it's like kind of puffy, kind of loose, and it's got the little V right here, it's a crew neck, you know? But instead of having long sleeves like sweaters have, it had short sleeves, and with even like the cuff, like ribbing on the, and I had never seen anything like that before. <laughs> And I was just like, so I was pretty judgmental about it. I mean, I didn't tell him, but in my head, in my 20 year old mind, I was just like, 
dork. <laughs> okay. Um, and I was just like so turned off by that. I, I just like could not get over it. And I have never been able to get over it. I still remember it and I still think about it. It's one of my memories of this guy who used to be my boss. And I think that has tainted the short sleeve sweater for me because that was the only time I had seen a short sleeve sweater. And I think since then, it's the only short sleeve sweater I've seen until short sleeve knitting patterns started coming out. Like not just summer tees, but sweaters with short sleeves. Anyway, that's, that's my explanation as to um, my averse reaction to the short slip sweater, but I'm getting over it. I seriously am so getting over it. I think they're cool now. I don't think we all look like he did. I think we look better and I like it now. I definitely like it now. So I might keep the sleeve short. I don't know. I haven't decided. I am knitting this on a size US 5 needle, which is what the pattern calls for. They're on my short tipped Lika needles which I very much enjoy. I really like the short tips. <sighs> yeah. I am offering kits for this thing in the Moonstone Dye Works shop. So if you are interested, <laughs> if you're interested in knitting one of these sweaters or any sweater, really, out of this combination of colors, which again, oh my God. Oh. Jeez, you guys, what the heck? What the heck? Which is these. I am offering kits in the Moonstone Dye Works shop. There's a link to that shop and to the Soldatna kits themselves in the description box below. Um, I've never offered kits before, but I don't know. I thought it'd be a cool idea. If you're interested, you can get one. Uh, they're pre-orders, so they will take I have I put it in there like one or two weeks between one or two weeks to ship, but it's probably going to be closer to one. I'm going to get the pre-orders and then I'm just going to start dyeing them. Uh, so if you're interested, check it out. The size extra small to medium requires one skein of each colorway, and which I think is you know I was talking about this pattern to my friend Jillian, who has the Good Witch Knits podcast, and she said something that kind of struck a chord with me is that the reason why she thinks a part of the reason why she thinks this pattern is so popular is because of its accessibility because a lot of patterns for color work sweaters require a lot of yarn and a lot of yarn unless you just have stuff in your stash is really expensive so the accessibility of this pattern for those particular sizes only requiring one skein of each colorway which is four um I think is can be a good thing um, but anyway so one skein of each color comes with the extra small to medium kits the pattern itself goes up to a size 3x which I think is under 60 inches um, for the bus measurement which isn't great I what is it is it like 50 something let me check it goes up to a 56 sized bust measurement and keep in mind you do need two to four, or she recommends two to four inches of positive ease. So this is not the most size inclusive pattern in the entire world, which is unfortunate. Um, but the kit that I'm offering comes with one extra skein of these two colorways for the size large through 3X, which is what the pattern calls for. Um, now, if you would like a kit, but you want to rearrange these into a different order and you are purchasing one of the larger sizes, um, just let me know which two colors you want the extra skeins of. It doesn't have to be these, it can be these or these or these or whatever. So, if you're interested, go check it out. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. I really like my color combo. And... If you do purchase one, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it and am so happy that you have or will or whatever. Okay, is that it? Is that all I wanna say? Yeah, that's it. Okay, so moving on to favorites. 
I have been consuming a lot of media lately. I've been reading a lot of books. I've been watching a lot of YouTube, not knitting podcasts. I've been kind of knitting podcasts have been taking a little bit of, back, of a backseat to some of the other stuff I've been watching on YouTube. I have been listening to a lot of new music. I'm really excited about a few new, new to me musical artists right now. And I've watched some really cool stuff on TV, including movies. I don't want to go into like a whole big sprawling thing about everything. So what I've decided to do is choose one book, one musical artist, and one movie to tell you about that I have been enjoying recently. Because man, you guys, there are so many good books and there are so many good musical artists and so many good movies. And I just, I love that stuff. And anyway, I just wanted to share these three with you. So I'm gonna tell you about them really quickly. The first is a book. So um, yesterday I finished reading Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. And it was just so great. It's a young adult novel. It's a fantasy novel. And it's the first of what is going to be a trilogy. And it's pretty much about a story in African mythology about how, I don't know when it's set. I'm sure it's, I don't know. I mean, it's fantasy, so it could be modern day. I don't know, I don't know. But it's in a time where there was once magic in the world. There are, there's the pantheon of gods and the gods have chosen people who to be magis, which means that they are endowed with uh, magic to represent the gods. Now, there's a king, and he, you know what? Am I, should I tell you a synopsis? I kind of hate synopsises. Synopses. I liked going into books blind. So if you don't want to hear about it, I'm not going to tell you much about it. No spoilers, right? No spoilers. But maybe skip the next couple minutes if you know you're gonna read it because me and maybe someone else has just told you it's really freaking good and you should read it. But anyway, magic has been uh, rid, the world has been rid of magic by this one king. Um, and pretty much the story is about four young people, teenagers, I think, I think they're teenagers. And they're trying to bring magic back, kind of. Uh, it's so good. It's not just that though. It's not just a book about fantasy and magic. It has so many elements of oppression and injustice and racism and prejudices. And it's just so good. Um, and like I said, it's a young adult novel. And I've, I've been starting to realize, I think I really love YA literature. Um, I don't know. I've, I've always kind of identified with my teenage self. <laughs> uh, there's this song lyric, um, and it is, my teenaged angst will be with me well into my 30s, and I've always identified with that. I'm not an angsty person, but I've always just had this strong tie to my teenaged direness. <laughs> anyway, um, it's, 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 it's a book that has this amazingly engaging and fun and wondrous story, but there's so much more to it. The author told me she, she writes about real issues and intertwines them so well into the story. There's particularly this one scene that has stuck with me so hard. And it's the scene between the main character and the, the king's son. And kind of the dichotomy in the book are the magis who, and the, the potential magis, the magis children, who are oppressed in this society. And then there are the, everyone else, the people who don't have magic in their lives. And the king and the ruling class are not magical and they have gotten rid of magic because they're threatened by it. And there's a whole history there too that's really complex. It's not just black and white, good and evil. So anyway, there's the citizens 
of Orisha, which is the place where this book is set. And then there are the former Magis who are not a part of the society anymore and their children. And those people are actively kept in an oppressed state. Um, and so the main character is a potential magi. There's a name for him and I can't remember what it is. That's why I keep calling him potential magis because I can't remember what they call themselves. But, um, and then the king's son is from this non-magical part of, non-oppressed part of Arishan society. And they're having this conversation about the magi's oppression. And it's such an important conversation. And it's, it's him trying to explain to her why her people are treated the way they are. Um, and he's trying to defend it. And slowly through this conversation, she's telling him that he's not listening to her experience. And no matter what he says, no matter what his defenses are, no matter what his reasonings are, what's going on in his head to justify the way she's getting treated, what she's asking him to do right now is to listen to her experience. And that's it. And he, you, you see him, he's written to slowly kind of understand her point of view and to put his own defensiveness aside and to just think about it. It's a really good scene. I don't know if you've read it. Do you know what scene I'm talking about? It's, it's, just, it's, it's just so good. And then at the end of the book, I listened to the audiobook, which is read really, really well. At the end of the book, the, uh, there's a note from the author that I think is so important. And I think it's so cool that she put it in there. It's very serious. And it talks about the state of black people and African-American people in this country specifically. And it's very, it's on a very serious note. And she talks about how it relates to the book and why she wrote the book because of it. And it's just so impressive to me that she would put this really straightforward um, note to the reader into a young adult book. I think that's so great. I just think it's so great to be that honest with teenagers, which I think is really important. Because like I said, I identify very much still with teenagers, even though now I'm in the second half of my 30s. Um, I think it's really important to treat teenagers like people, to treat children like people. And I think this book is really good for that. Anyway, it's really good. I think you should read it, maybe, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, I talked a lot about that. I kind of wanted to take up this segment of time for all three of those things, but I talked way too long about that book. The Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adayemi. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. Okay, now the music. Um, so, Chloe and Hallie. I, that's, it's a group, it's a group, it's a duo of sisters, it's a duet, it's two sisters. They're young. Um, I think they're teenagers. They might not be adults yet. <laughs> and um, they're an R&B do, duo, duet, whatever you call it. They make R&B music and their music is really, really, really good, like really complex and really beautiful and really eclectic. And there's elements of R&B to it. There's elements of like 90s R&B to it, which I can really appreciate. There's elements of like, I don't even know, like, like real music, like, like with the operatic kind of singy kind of stuff. Um, it's really good, really complex, really beautiful, really well-made music. And what I think is really cool about them too is that they're writing and producing their own music. And it's also really creative music. It's really unique. It's really individual, I feel like. And it's, it's, it's really refreshing to like, to find their music and to, to find something that's really being created from scratch by such young, talented, creative people. And it's really great. Like, I mean, I don't know how much more I can describe it. It's, it's, it's R&B and 
I love it. I love it so much. Um, they have one full album out and it's called The Kids Are All Right. And I mean, just one of the things I love about it, and this harkens back too, to me, my weird obsession with just being a teenager, <laughs> is that a lot of the songs are kind of about that. There's this one song in particular called Happy Without Me, and I, I posted about this on Instagram because I'm kind of obsessed with that song right now, still. I, I've been obsessed with this one song for like a couple weeks now. It's such a complex song and it's such a beautiful song. There's so many different parts to it. There's like four different parts to the song where you hear when you hear them individually, they could all be from different songs, but they work so perfectly and so naturally together as a single song. It's like a it's not just like a, a flat like this is the song or like this is the chorus, this is the verse, this is the chorus, this is the verse and it all goes together. It like really takes you around this song. And I, it's, I, what am I trying to say here? So I loved this song, right? And then I went, I wanted to know what the lyrics were because I was trying to sing along, but I couldn't pick up on all the lyrics myself. So I went and I read the lyrics and they're all about like liking a boy and him being your boyfriend as a teenager and like what you're doing together, like on the football field and like under the bleachers and how now you're not together anymore and you see him with somebody else and you're really not happy about it. It's such a teenager song. Like the lyrics are so juvenile. And I love that. I love that the lyrics are so juvenile and they're put to this song that's so brilliant and good. And I really like that about their music. It's just really good. I like it a lot. So... That's the music. Um, okay, the movie is Always Be My Maybe. Me and my husband watched this movie last night. I've been wanting to watch it ever since it came out on my birthday. And we finally watched it and I loved it so much. Uh, it's a rom-com, it's a romantic comedy. I am not particularly into romantic comedies. Um, it's not a genre that I like dislike or that I won't watch, but it's this type of genre where m chances are if it's a romantic comedy for the sake of romantic comedy's sake, I'm probably not going to like it, but there are a lot of romantic comedies that I really do like. This movie's one of them. This movie is more than a rom-com for rom-com's sake. It, I feel, is more like the rom-com was like a vehicle for these really, really amazing comedians to make a really great movie. It was really, really good. So it's Ali Wong and Randall Park. And they're two comedians that I really love. Randall Park is the dad from Fresh Off the Boat and Ali Wong um, was a writer for Fresh Off the Boat for a few seasons or something. She's also a stand-up comedian. She has a couple, she has a really great special and I just love them both so much. Um, I really like Fresh Off the Boat. I also really love Eddie Huang, who Fresh Off the Boat is about, even though he's him, Eddie Huang himself and Fresh Off the Boat, the show, are pretty different. Like Fresh Off the Boat was based off of his book, which was a memoir, and it's pretty different. I love Eddie Huang, like a lot. He actually had his own other show, um, called Wong's World. It's a food show, it was a travel food show, and it was one of my favorite food shows. Anyway, man, I, <laughs> tangents. Okay, so Randall Park, he's the dad on Fresh Off the Boat. I love him. He's such a good comedian. He's like, he's really good at being, what in comedy is called the straight man where he's the character that's always like like everyone around him's acting all crazy and he can just be super calm and super grounded and it's a really effective comedic element and i really like him he's really good at that um and then ali wong is a writer and a comedian and i don't know if i've ever seen her act in anything other than this movie um which she's so funny. And the cool thing about this movie is it, it was them two teaming up to make this movie and they both play the leads in it. And they also 
pretty much wrote the movie or something. I think that's true. But they had a lot of creative input, which I really, really like. It's kind of, it was kind of a more like holistic Lee made kind of movie where the people in it were part of the creative team and I feel like that just makes it so much more funny and also my favorite scene in this movie involved Keanu Reeves who is hilarious the Keanu Reeves scenes are so funny and so good um, it's a movie that it, it, its cast is mostly Asian American people, and I think that is so cool. Um, it's not only the cast was mostly Asian American people, but they were the creative element behind it. They were the people who made the movie. It, I don't know. It's really good. It's really good. It's really funny. Uh, if you like comedies or romantic comedies, uh, I. I definitely think you should watch it. Like, out of all the things I've recommended, probably that one is going to be liked by the most people and is the most accessible, accessible to most people. So, and it probably takes the least amount of time. It's like an hour and a half long movie. You're probably going to like it. It's really funny. Okay, I'm done. That's it. Those are my things that I talked about today. And I'm going to leave you there. I hope you're having a really, really, really great late spring. We only have, what is it? I think a few more days left of spring and then it's summer. How is your spring going? Are you knitting things? Is it nice out? Is it really cold? Is it really hot? Tell me about it in the comments below. I would love to hear about how you are doing, what you are making, what you're watching and reading and listening to right now. I would really love to hear about that. Tell, that's what I want to hear about. Tell me about if you're reading something you're really enjoying, if you're watching something you're really enjoying, or listening to something you're really enjoying, tell me about it down there. And if you're interested in more things, recommendations and stuff, read through the comments and maybe somebody else's recommendation will strike your fancy. If you like the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. Join in on the last dog days of the spring sweater cow. And... Have fun and stay awesome. Bye.